begin, just remember, if you want to know what it's like, it's kind of like this. If, which the Word of God does, the Word of God teaches us that the Word of God is like a seed. Can everybody understand? It's like a what? Now, in the Bible, it says that in the seed, when you look at a seed, what do you see? It's almost nothing, right? It's this round little bitty thing, right? But inside of this seed, there is the roots of the tree, the trunk of the tree, the leaves of the tree. And the Bible even expresses that the shade that comes from the tree is also included in that seed. Also, the birds resting on the branches are included in that tree, right? As you know, the bird is not in the seed, okay? What that means is everything that we need, everything that the tree needs, if to, to have these birds come is already included in the seed. So what we do is when you plant the seed, we don't have to try hard to raise the seed, right? All it does is because in that seed, that seed has all the information, everything is already in there. The moment that we plant the seed into the ground, it is the tree that begins to automatically grow. Everybody understand? So it's kind of like, <clears throat> if you look at the Word of God, it may seem like we've heard it before. Or sometimes you may seem like you're tired. But there's one thing you have to understand. You don't even have to understand 100% of everything. If you just receive one word in your heart, it will grow. Everybody understand? So now the reason why we put so many sermons into our world camp is because if you think about it, when you sit in the sermon, you know, it's really hard to concentrate for the whole 100%. Right? You sit there and you're excited. Grashas just got done performing. And you're all like, wow, crazy. And you're like hyped up. And then pastor starts preaching. And then all of a sudden your neck goes back to the side. Or you think about, oh, man, I should have I ate this for lunch. I wonder what's for lunch. So you start thinking like this. And you come back and you listen. Oh, he's talking about Jacob again. And you go back out into your own world. And you, like, check your Facebook, Instagram on your phone. And then you come back and say, like, oh, now he's talking about David. So, everyone, <clears throat> I understand that you're young and, you know, there's a lot of things going on in your mind. But what you have to understand is you cannot have any change in your heart without the Word of God. If you want to change, there's only one way we change. And that is through the Word of God. So if you continue to just listen, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, this is already, what, the third day? So there's one day, full day today, and then we end tomorrow night. So in this very short time, if you can plant even one word inside of your heart, that will change the rest of your life. Everybody understand? Because if you look in the Bible... A lot of times, Jesus didn't have a lot of time to meet people. What that means is, Jesus was very busy. Many people came to him. Sometimes, he literally only said one or two sentences to somebody. But by saying one or two sentences, that person who was blind was able to see. Just by one or two sentences, we could see that demons were cast out, people were healed from their disease, and their lives completely changed. Even dead people came back to life. So everyone, it's not that you have to know everything, which I know is unrealistic. However, you got to believe that if I just receive one word into my heart, that this word will change me. Even if you have this faith, God will work through it. Everybody understand? So we're going to open our Bibles today to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. We're going to read verses 1 through 29. Genesis chapter 27, verses 1 through 29. Now when I read, just please, just try to follow along and just understand what is happening. Okay, that's all I require of you. When you read the Bible, just try to follow along. And, you know, don't try to interpret anything. Just, you know, try to follow and understand exactly what's going on. Okay? So let's talk about this. Genesis chapter 27, verse 1. And it came to pass 
that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out into the field and take me some venison. And make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son. And Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat, <clears throat> that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father peradventure will feel me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son, Esau, which were with her in the house, and, to, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son, Esau, or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him, and said, The voice is of Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, and his brothers, as, his brothers, as, as his brother Esau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come now, come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over my brethren and let my, thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee and blessed be, that, uh, blessed be he that blesseth thee. We read up to verse 29. You know, actually, <clears throat> as a pastor, I meet a lot of different people from different churches. I meet a lot of people from different, you know, races, countries. So basically, simply put, I should have just said I meet a lot of people. But then when I think about it, <clears throat> most of the people that I talk to, they are very confused by the story of Jacob and Esau. Do you know why? Why do you think people are kind of confused about this story? Huh? How many of you go to church? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you believe in God? Raise your hand. How many of you are just too tired? to Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Everyone, listen very carefully. If you look at this story, one of the confusing things is Jacob lied. Didn't he? Did he? So his father asked him, who are you? What did Jacob say? I am Esau, thy firstborn. But is he Esau? Who is he? So he lied, right? But how come he was blessed? Jacob was the one that was blessed. 
But why is it he was blessed, but he got that blessing through lying, right? Isn't it? So how do you connect the dots? How could Jacob be blessed when he lied? Did he lie just once? No. How many times did he say he's Esau? Like two or three times, right? Am I right? Even when his father asked him, Oh, you gave me this venison. You know what venison is? Venison is deer meat, right? Was it deer meat? No, it was goat meat. You didn't know? It says it right there. What did Rebecca say to Jacob? Bring me two kids of the goats, and I will make the food that your father likes, right? So Jacob lied how many times? You know, in many of the churches that I used to go to, they gave Jacob a nickname, the great deceiver. Why? Because he deceived his father and tricked the blessing out of him, right? That's what it seems like, right? Yes or no? Thank you. But let me tell you something. Jacob did not lie. Now you're thinking, what, Pastor Terry? Now you lying. No. Jacob did not lie. And I'm going to show you why Jacob did not lie. Okay? Now I want to ask you a question. Okay? <clears throat> For most of the part, there are people who have gone to church. And for me, when I was, since I was five, I went to church. Now, when I first went to church, I didn't know anything. You know, my father, he would, he would when he grew up, he was. Uh uh. That's why we have two. <clears throat> okay. So <clears throat> when I was young, I didn't know much. So my father, he grew up and he was forced to go to church. So he decided in his heart that when I grow up, I'm never going to force my son to go to church. So he stopped. He didn't go to church for a long time. He didn't go to church at all, almost. And my mother, she didn't know much about God. She grew up, you know, in a Buddhist family in South Korea. So the only way I found out about church was my friend. He was six. I was five. So he says, hey, you want to come to church with me? I was like, what's a church? He says, just follow me. I'll show you. So I asked my mom if I can go with him. My mom said, sure, go ahead. So I went. Now this is in Alabama, the Bible Belt of America. right? In New York, you don't see many church billboards. In New York, you see Calvin Klein, you know, skinny models, H&M kind of advertising. However, when you go to Georgia and you go to Alabama and you go to Texas, you see signs with like fire and it says, don't go to hell, John 3.16. So <clears throat> this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is like the Bible Belt of America. Okay, so when I went to Sunday school with him, it was awesome. Sunday school, you didn't do much. You colored all day. And they gave you free sandwiches and Coke. Wow. Church is awesome. <laughs> right? I can do church. I can do this, right? Free Coke, coloring, playing games, right? And learning those songs, you know. Noah went to the Arky, Arky, those kind of songs, you know. I could do that. But then, because, you know, I, have, I came with his family, I had to go with his family to the main service. Now, that was different. The pastor was like 80 or 90. I don't know how old he was. But that pastor looked like he was there when Moses received the Ten Commandments. <laughs> and I just remember that he would walk on the stage like really slow. And I thought, dude, will this be his last sermon? But then all of a sudden, he'll start preaching, and he changed. He became this little ball of fire. 
He started screaming, everybody, we're all sinners. Everybody's like, amen, amen. We're all going to go to hell because of our sin. Amen, amen. Do you know what hell is like? And then people's like, show us. So he pulled out this thing in his hand. It looked like a lighter. But then when he turned on, this huge flame comes out. I was like, whoa. Now imagine a whole ocean of this. Everybody's like, amen, amen. I was like, whoa. I was like five years old. I didn't know what I was doing. So that night when I went home, all I could imagine was a big river of fire. And then, because my friend slept over at my house, I was like stressed out of my mind. That was like the shocking sermon. And he says, oh, you know, if you want to go to heaven, you have to pray. All right? I don't want to go to the other option, so teach me how to pray. So he goes, repeat after me. Please bless my mommy. Please bless my daddy. Please bless my dog. Please bless my teacher. Amen. I mean, at six years old, what else are you going to pray? So I was like, okay, I can do that. Please bless my mom. Please bless my dad. God, I don't have a dog, but if I had one, please bless him. God, please bless my teacher. And I said, but I, I was going to end, but I didn't know what an amen was. I never used that word before. So I didn't know what amen was. So I decided, how do you end this prayer? So I was like, Okay, since we're going to go to sleep, it's natural. Just say, all right, good night, God. <laughs> so I said, good night, God. And then my friend just jumped up. He's like, ooh, ooh. I was like, what? You're going to go to hell. Why? What did I do? You said, good night to God. Like, Why is that bad? It's a sin. Why is it a sin? God don't sleep. So what do I do? You better ask God to forgive you right now. God, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you didn't sleep. It's my fault. God, please forgive me. I swear I'll never say goodnight ever, 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 ever again. So that began the original spiritual life I knew of if I do something wrong, ask God to forgive me. Do something wrong, ask God to forgive me. Do something wrong, and what? Exactly. Now, it's kind of funny, right? But that is how most of us live our spiritual life, right? So let me ask you a question. If I were to ask you, are you a sinner or are you righteous? Some of you, to say that you are righteous feels like you're lying. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? Am I right? Why? Because you've sinned. It's not like Pastor Terry sinned for you. It's not like Pastor Terry is wearing a mask of your face and then sinned for you. You actually did the sin, isn't it? You've actually lied. So for you to say, oh, I am not a sinner. I am righteous. It feels like lying. You understand? Everybody understand? So now let's go back to Jacob and Esau. Very, very important. Is Jacob Esau? Yes or no? No, right? Okay, they're twins. They're twins. But Esau came out first. So who's the firstborn? Yes, only by a couple minutes, but he came out first, right? Am I right? Yes. So he is actually the firstborn. Now, the reason why this is important is because According to the law of, those, of Israel at that time, according to the rules there, the blessings are supposed to go to the firstborn. Everybody understand? Secondly, secondly, the Bible clearly shows us that it was Esau who pleased his father. Why? Because Esau was a manly man. You know what I mean? He had like hair everywhere. Right? I mean, he was so hairy. That when Jacob put on goat's hair, his father could not tell the difference. <laughs> now, I'm hairy, but if you touch my arm, I definitely do not feel like a goat. 
I don't know how hairy as I was. But if you can compare his arm to a goat leg, that's pretty hairy. He probably, you probably, he probably had, I don't know, he probably didn't even look like a human. In my opinion, he probably was the first version of a werewolf. Right? Now, I don't know, but actually, I'll give you a second. My two kids are here. John and Martha, they're somewhere here in their rooms, in their classes. Sorry, but since you joined the main program of IYF, you got to hear stories about you. When my kids were born, it was amazing. So my son, John, my daughter, Martha, number one and number two, they were born in South Korea. Now, have you ever been to a South Korean baby room? Like, you know, the nursery in the hospital after the babies are born? Have you ever been there? Yeah, Korean babies have zero body hair. Like zero. They don't even have, they're born eyebrowless, right? <laughs> they have like negative hair. Some of them don't even have hair on their head. Some of them do. But my babies, they came out with full mustache beard, Unibrow, shoulder hair, back hair, they had hair on their fingers. They had hair everywhere. So, you know, when my son was born, I looked at my son. Now, my wife just gave birth, so she's tired. She's like, uh. And, you know, baby came out. She's like, what does he look like? I was like, you don't want to know right now. You might want to wait a couple days. She's like, no, 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 I want to see him. And she looked, even she was shocked. She had hair on, his forehead was covered with hair. So I look, and I, my wife is Korean. So it's not her fault. Whose fault is it? Exactly. So I looked at her and I said, I'm sorry. And so they put all our babies in the baby room. I didn't even need to read the name on the bed, because I knew which one was mine. Mine was the one with the mustache. That's my baby right there. Why, because he had sideburns that were literally all, he looked like Elvis. But the good news is, is that later all the hair came off, right? But dude, it says in the Bible that when Esau was born, he looked like a hairy garment. That means Esau looked like a wool rag. So he did have goat hair. What I'm saying is, for Jacob to say that he has Esau is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Esau pleased his father. Everything that Esau did made Isaac super happy. He was proud. This is my son. My son's a hunter. He goes out with a bow and arrow. And he like hunts, he provides food for the family. He's a real son, my real son. Yes. He's muy macho. But then there's Jacob. He's all weak. He's got zero hair on his body. And all he does is hang out in the kitchen and cook all day with his mother. So his father did not put any hope into Jacob. So if you look at it, Jacob is not Esau. He cannot be Esau, you understand? He cannot change how he was born. He was born second born, right? He was not born the first born. So he cannot change who he is. He is not Esau. However, while the babies were in the womb, this is very important. God gave a promise to the mother, Rebecca. God said that the older shall serve the younger. Everybody understand? Everybody understand? According to the law, supposedly it's the firstborn who receives the blessing. It's the firstborn. However, God's heart, he chose to give who the blessing? Jacob. Now this is important. Jacob has zero qualification 
to receive the blessing from his father. Zero qualification. He is not the firstborn. So by according to the law, he cannot receive the blessing. Number two, he does not match his father's standard. Esau matches his father's standard. His father loves a very strong, manly son, a son with lots of hair, a son who's a hunter, a son who can do things and do things well all the time. That is who his father likes. Everybody understand? But Jacob is not that. Jacob is opposite. So there is no qualification for Jacob to receive the blessing of his father. Now I want to tell you something. This story, though, is one of the most important stories to our salvation. The same way that Jacob is blessed is the same way we become righteous. Everybody understand? We're going to talk about this. When Jacob was just minding his own business, then all of a sudden Rebecca comes in and says, Jacob, come here. I just overheard a conversation between Isaac and your brother Esau. It's time. Your father is going to pass over the blessing. You have to receive that blessing. So you have to go in front of your father and you have to say that you're Esau. And what did Jacob say? <laughs> Mom. First of all, he is hairy and I have no hair. My father, for sure, he will know that I am not Esau. And if he finds out, and he finds out that I'm lying, I'm going to be cursed, not blessed. Does this make sense? It makes sense, right? But then what did Rebecca say? In modern language, she said, shut up. Listen to me. You do what I say. Bring me two kids of the goats. And what happened? She killed the goats, made food out of the goat meat, took the goat hair, covered all of Jacob's skin, right? Around his neck and his arms, right? And what else did she put on Jacob? She put Esau's clothes. Everybody understand? Esau's clothes. Now we're going to go back to this. Let's open our Bibles to... Romans chapter 9. So if you go into the Old Testament, uh, New Testament, Romans chapter 9. Something very interesting comes out. <clears throat> Romans chapter 9. Now, Everybody understand the story that I explained until now? Right? Now, this is very important. Jacob received a blessing. Am I right? But Jacob lied. Esau, he was the good guy, wasn't he? Father told hey, Esau, go out, give me some venison. So he went out and he did it. He poured his heart. He went hunting. He put all of his effort. However, he was the one that was cursed and not blessed. You know, when I used to read this story, I used to get angry. Why? Because I'm the firstborn. I would be really angry if my younger brother did the same thing, right? I felt so wronged, right? Dude, after Esau listened to his father, went out, did all of this, and this sneaky little dude comes in and steals it. That's how I felt, very angry, upset. It's not even my story, but I got very upset, right? Took it personal. But everyone, this is what I'm going to show you. In Romans chapter 9... Paul explains the story of Jacob and Esau. Okay, let's start reading. <clears throat> let's read verse uh, 10. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, verse 11, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to, the, according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now this is very important. When did God decide to give the blessing to Jacob? When? 
When? When? I have no idea. I cannot speak mumbo. What? Before he was born. Isn't it? Before he was born. Now this is important. God says, right here in the Bible, very clearly, it says before they could do a good action, or even before they could commit a sin, right? Even before they could commit any action, God already decided to do what? He already decided to give the blessing to Jacob. Am I right? Yes? Okay, there's a lot of people sleeping. I guess you, the marathon killed you, huh? So especially in the middle there, everybody in the middle. So let's wake up and let's stretch your arms out. Come on. Let's go. Everybody stretch your arms out. Those who are sleeping, wake up, please. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Wake up. Okay, stretch out. There we go. <clears throat> All right. While I'm preaching, rather than you laying down, you can go ahead and stretch. It's okay to wake up. You got it? But you have to listen. It's very important. So it says here that even before they could commit their first action, God said that he hated Esau, but he loved who? He loved who? Now, why is this? This is very important that you understand why God loved Jacob and why God hated Esau. If you understand this, this makes perfect sense. And then everything else will start to make a lot of sense to you. Who does Esau represent? Esau is the firstborn, yes? Am I right? So Esau is the one who fulfills the requirement of the law. Everybody understand? Everybody understand? He fulfills the requirement of the law. Isn't that a good thing, though? It should be a good thing, right? A person who fulfills the law, right? Secondly, Esau was the one who obeyed his father. Esau was the one who worked really hard to please his father. Esau was the one who worked well, did everything well. Everybody understand? Huh? So he pleased the father. He pleased Isaac. But God says that he hated who? He hated Esau, but he loved Jacob. Now I want to ask you, have you kept the law? Have you kept the law? No, right? You have not kept the law. Secondly, what does the Bible say? In Romans chapter 3 it says, we are all born in sin, right? And what happened? There is none that doeth good. No, not. Exactly. So none of you please God. So Esau represents the perfect person. Esau represents he fulfills the law. Esau is the one who can please the father. But it is that person that God decided not to accept. Why? Because God wanted to love you and me. If God gave the blessing to Esau, then you and I cannot go to heaven. If God gave the blessing to those who fulfill the law, if God made heaven possible only for those who please God, then none of us can go to heaven. Everybody understand? That's why God hated Esau and loved Jacob. God wanted every one of us, all of us, he wanted everyone to be able to go to heaven. Everyone. But you do not fulfill the law. I do not fulfill the law. Actually, everyone, even though I was born first in my family, but Esau does not represent me. I am Jacob. I am the one who's condemned by the law. I am the one who has failed God. I am the one who tried not to sin, but eventually I sin again. I am Jacob. You are Jacob. Everybody understand? So it says here, very clearly, in Romans chapter 9, it says here, for the, verse 11, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So God realized one thing. If I leave salvation into your hands, if you have to work for it, and if you have to earn the salvation, then it will not happen. 
That's why God had to do it this way so that salvation will be 100% based on if God wants to give it to you or not. Everybody understand? So how do you receive salvation? Do you earn it? Do you pray for it? Do you try to keep the commandments? Do you go to church for it? No. Salvation has to be given to us. Everybody understand? But that's the good news. Why? The good news is it says it's by what? Election, selection, choice. So it's up to God who he saves. Everybody understand? But what does God say? Whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That means God chose everyone. Isn't it? Oh, no, no, Pastor Terry, I don't go to church. So? Whosoever means whosoever. Everybody understand? So this is what we want to talk about. Let's keep reading. What does it say in verse? So he says here in verse 13, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Jacob means those who cannot keep the law, those who fail, those who do not fit the standard of being so perfect that you can go to heaven. Those lacking people are the ones that God loves, which means it's you and me. Everybody understand? Now let's read verse 14. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Verse 15. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Verse 16. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. What does it say here? Not to the one who runs. Not even to the one who desires it. You know what that means? You don't even have to desire salvation. He made it so easy, isn't it? It's like not even like free. It's like super free. It's like ridiculous free. It's like when you go to the mall, they have free stuff, right? You have to walk over there to get the free stuff, right? So at least that requires you to walk over there. But this free is you don't even have to walk over there. He just like hands it out. You understand? So it says here that not even to those who will it. It's not about people who even desire to have it. It's not even about the people who run. None of that is important. The only thing is, it's 100% by the grace of God. God has to give it to us. Right? So if you read this here, <clears throat> let's keep going. Verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Verse 18, Therefore, has he mercy on whom he has mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. Verse 19, Thou wilt say then unto me, Who does he yet find fault? For who has resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. If you look here, what does this mean? This means, basically, God is our what? Potter. Understand? Potter. That means the potter takes the clay. Then who's the clay? Me, right? We're the clay. So what does God say? He will make it how he wants to make it. Everybody understand? Now, what does this mean? This means, how can I, who am the clay, who is made by God, say what I am in front of God? You understand what I'm saying? So if God says, hey, you're a cup. No, I'm a plate. Everybody understand? That's basically the simplest way I can say it. If the potter makes it, hey, you're a bowl. No, I don't want to be a bowl. I want to be a teapot. Everyone, the potter makes you what he wants to make you. Everybody understand? And what has God made us? He's made us righteous. Everybody understand? So if God has made us righteous, then who are we to say, no, I'm not righteous? You understand what I'm saying? What did God show Rebecca? God told Rebecca that the young, older, shall serve the what? So God has already told Rebecca 
already decided to make Jacob the one who receives the blessing. Am I right? Am I right? That's right. So if Jacob is the one who's supposed to be receiving the blessing, blessing, how can Jacob say no? Jacob was not lying. Jacob was obeying. Everybody understand? He forsook and threw away his own self-righteousness. He was able to throw away what he saw was right. He was able to throw away his own heart. He was able to throw away his own pride. He was able to completely throw himself away and receive the word of God exactly as it is. Everybody understand? Everybody understand? Now, this is another thing. This is very interesting. I really like this story, Jacob and Esau. But what we're going to talk about here is, now let's talk about how Rebecca worked. So we know up until here the heart of God, right? But now we're going to show you how exactly Rebecca worked. Now, the way Rebecca worked, and in the Bible, what you have to understand is Isaac represents God. Rebecca represents Jesus Christ. So we're going to talk about this. Jacob did not do anything. Who made the food? Who made the clothes? Who, who brought the clothes? Who covered his arms? So Rebecca did everything, didn't it? So the beautiful thing is, the voice is still whose voice? Whose voice? Jacob's voice. Now, I don't know, but their voice seemed pretty different. Right? You can imagine Esau's voice, right? He probably talked deep. Hey, Dad, how are you? But then Jacob was like, hey, Dad, how are you? The annoying voice, right? Now, this is important. When Jacob stood in front of Isaac, he says, who are you? Because Jacob's blind, right? I mean, Isaac's blind, right? Not Jacob. Isaac's blind. He's like, who are you? <laughs> Jacob. Now, think about this. If he said that, what would happen? He'll be cursed, right? But this is worse. Think about it. Esau. Does he even sound like Esau? I mean, none of you would confuse my voice with James Earl Jones, would you? No? Let's try it. Huh? Everything the light touches is yours. No, then I don't sound like Mufasa, do I? Everyone, Jacob is going to go in front of Isaac and say, I'm ass out with that little voice. He probably feels very naked in his heart, right? But you know, the beautiful thing is, Jacob did it. How could Jacob do it? Jacob did it because of denying himself. He received his mother's heart exactly as it is. So what did he do? Even he was able to say boldly, I am Esau. His father, did he accept him right away? He said, no, okay, you, what? Come closer. Let me touch you and see if you are really Esau or not. Don't you think a father knows his son's voice? Did you know parents can tell which baby is theirs when they cry? Out of a million babies. It's pretty interesting. But the amazing thing is he knows his son's voice, right? But then still, he says, I am Esau, your firstborn. He says, come here, let me feel you. So he felt him, right? Now, what was the problem with Jacob? Jacob has no hair on his arm by himself. No hair, am I right? But when Isaac felt Jacob, did he have hair or not? Yes, he had hair. A lot of it. And what else did he say? Hey, where? Hey, bring me the food. Bring me the venison. Let me ask you a question. Who do you think knows how to cook for the father better? Son or the wife? Exactly. The wife knows exactly what her husband wants to eat. And sometimes on purpose, she makes it a little different. <laughs> Just to let us know who's in charge of the food supply. So she made the food, right? So she presented the thing that the father demanded, right? Who prepared it? Rebecca prepared the stipulation, the condition. Jacob said, uh, Isaac said, make me that food that I like and I will bless you, right? So who fulfilled that requirement? It was Rebecca who made the requirement, right? Secondly, what else? Rebecca put Jacob, uh, Esau's clothes onto Jacob. So when 
Isaac said, come here, kiss me. He kissed him. He even smelled like Esau. I wonder what Esau smelled like. Probably like a men's gym locker, right? Isn't it? He must have smelled something because he had a very peculiar smell. You know, they say that Americans smell like meat, but Koreans smell like garlic. Sorry, I'm stuck in both worlds. I have no idea what you're talking about. But the important thing is, even the smell, even the smell of Jacob was not his smell anymore. Everybody understand? His clothes were not his clothes. His skin was not his skin. His gift was not his gift. There was no more Jacob. What was there? There was only Esau left. Am I right? Everybody understand? Everyone, this is very important. Now we're going to talk about this. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians. It's a little back. Go to the, yeah, go a little bit back. Right after Romans is 1 Corinthians. We're going to go into 2 Corinthians. If you go to 2 Corinthians, we're going to read chapter 4. Chapter 4. We're going to read verses 5 through 7, okay? Verses 5 through 7. Verses 5 through 7. Okay? Roman, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 through 7. Verse 5 says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. Verse 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of... Exactly. What does this mean? Jacob by himself is what? Cannot receive the blessing can only be cursed. However, what does it say here? Ourselves, standing in front of God, yes, it's true. We cannot say we are righteous. We cannot say that we are holy. We cannot say that we are sanctified. We can only say that, yes, I committed sin. I committed sin. I committed sin. I committed sin. But what does it say here? We do not preach ourselves. We do not only talk about ourselves. Who else do we talk about? We talk about Jesus. We are not by ourselves, everyone. This is what I'm talking about. This is what the Bible is telling us. Let's talk about this. <clears throat> Let's go down. Let's read verse 13. Same chapter, verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. What does that mean? What does that mean? Jacob spoke through believing. Isn't it? I am Esau, your firstborn. I am the one that's supposed to receive this blessing. I am Esau. He spoke by faith, everyone. He believed in what Rebecca prepared for him. And he took only what Rebecca did for him, the image that Rebecca made. Rebecca changed Jacob's image into the image of Esau. Everybody understand? What did God do? God changed our sinful image and he changed it into the image of Jesus Christ. Everybody understand? It's that simple. That is why it says we are of the same faith. Am I right? Same faith. Now let's look at this. <clears throat> let's look at the next chapter, which is chapter 5. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's read verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, verse 16 and 17 first. 16 and then 17. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16. What does it say? Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. What does this mean? Paul says, we know no man after the flesh, right? Can you go back to verse 16? 
put verse 16 back up again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Now, what does this mean? Your flesh sins, right? Am I right? Your flesh has the sin. Your flesh leads you to sin, right? But what does it say here? Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Right? Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. We do not know people after the flesh. What does that mean? We don't see Jacob anymore. Who do we see? We see Esau. We do not see our flesh anymore. If you look at your flesh, if you look at yourself, you see sinner, 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 and you will always see sinner, sinner, sinner. That will not change. However, what do you have to look at now? It says for we have to look toward who? Christ. Now let's go to verse 17. What does it say? Verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become. Now let's go to verse 21. Same chapter, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. What does it say? Repeat. Let's read it together. Everybody read it together. Ready, go. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now this is basically what happened with Jacob and Esau. So what did Rebecca do? Rebecca took the goat skin, covered Jacob's smoothness, covered Jacob's lacking. Rebecca even put Esau's clothes onto Jacob. And what did she do? She also prepared the savory meat that Isaac required of Jacob. So if you look at it, just like in verse 21 here, it says what? In verse 21, it says, He, Jesus Christ, was made the sinner, so that now we have been made what? We have been made the righteousness of God in him. Everyone, what is faith? Faith is not trusting what I see, but faith is trusting the word of God. Everybody understand? So let's read one more verse. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. We're going to flip a little bit here and there. So let's open to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Let's read verse 6, starting from verse 6. Romans chapter 10, starting from verse 6. Okay. If you found it, I will read. Verse 6 says, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. Verse 7, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? Verse 8, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9, what does it say here? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Everybody understand? And what does this mean? It says, For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now most people take this as, See, Pastor Terry, you have to confess your sin to be saved. That's not what it's saying. That's not what it's saying at all. What does faith first form? Faith, faith first forms where? In my heart, right? So what is in my heart will come out of my what? Am I right? Can you confess that you are righteous? No. That means you don't have the faith that leads you to salvation. You understand what I'm saying? But if you are able to believe the word of God, what comes out of your mouth? Yeah, I may feel like I'm a sinner, but what does the word of God say? The word of God says, I have been made the righteousness of God, right? If you believe it, what comes out of your mouth? I am saved. Understand? I'm saved. I'm free from sin. Jesus' blood made me free from sin forever. People who believe in this, they confess it with their mouth. Everybody understand? 
I just want to let you know. I told the people in L.A. this, so I think it should be only fair that I let you know this. The hair that you see on my head is not my hair. I am wearing a wig. Did you know this? Like, oh, Pastor Terry, say it ain't so. It's true. The reason why I do this is because they make me do this. Because if they take a picture of me, nobody wants to come to World Camp because it's no longer International Youth Fellowship. So I wear this only for photographic reasons. But I am bald. Okay? You don't have to clap. Don't clap, don't clap. It's not something to clap about. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the important thing is, this is what I'm telling you. But what do you see? <laughs> it looks real, right? People go, oh my God, Pastor Terry, it looks so real. Actually, it is real hair. It's just not mine. Everybody understand? My baldness is covered with some dude's hair. Everybody understand? So when I say stand in front of you, what am I going to say? Hey, everyone. How are you? Right? Do I have hair or not? <laughs> you don't laugh that much, okay? Everyone, listen very carefully. He's saying here, I confess that I'm bald because I what? I am. Isn't it? Yeah. I confess that I'm righteous because I am. Everybody understand? That's what that means. Confession is made unto salvation. It is the heart that believes. And that's why the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Have you heard this verse before? Yeah, I told you, there are some verses I can never find. I looked for that thing all morning. I couldn't find it. But it's in there. Later, go to concordance or biblegateway.org and go find it, okay? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So, this is very important. Right? Let's read it one more time. Chapter 10, verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So where do you get your righteousness? Through faith, right? By faith I become righteous. Not by my actions. Not by what I have done. God promised that he has made Jesus Christ the sinner and he has made me the righteousness of who? The righteousness of God. Am I right? So I accept that through faith. By believing in it. Not by seeing it. But by believing in it. Everybody understand? By believing in it. That is how I receive this righteousness. So if you ask somebody, are you righteous? No. Are you, are you holy? No. Are you sanctified? No. That means what? Do they believe or don't believe? They don't believe. So for Esau and Jacob, Rebekah told Jacob, go in front of your father and receive the blessing because that is the will of God. The promise of God is he wants you to receive the blessing. But the beautiful thing is, how could Jacob be so confident? His voice is still his squeaky voice, but he's doing it. He's going there. He's standing in front of Isaac, and he's saying, I am, Esau, your firstborn. Oh, how did you catch the deer so quickly? God gave it to me. Didn't he say that? He didn't lie, did he? God gave it to me. So are you really my son, Esau? Yes, I am. I am Esau. Esau is I. If you go to Africa, that's how they greet themselves. My name is Ebenezer. Ebenezer is I. I was like, what? It took some getting used to, but they made sure you know their name is correct by saying it twice. But the important thing is, this is what Rebecca did for Jacob. Rebecca made Jacob have nothing lacking, nothing to receive the Father's blessing. He covered his smoothness. Even he smelled like Esau. Everybody understand? He felt like Esau. He made the food like Esau. And he even smelled like Esau. Everybody understand? When God says that we are righteous, whose righteousness did he give us this time? He gave us his own righteousness. 
Not my righteousness. My righteousness changes every day. I may do well up until a certain point, but then when I sin again, what do I do? I feel guilty again. I feel shameful again. My righteousness falls and it disappears, right? But this righteousness is different. God gave us whose righteousness? His righteousness. In the Bible, righteousness is referred to as robes, clothes. So what did God put on us? The robes of Jesus' righteousness. Am I right? Am I right? So when we stand in front of God, oh, the voice is the voice of Terry. But come over here. Come, 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 come. Oh, the righteousness of Jesus. Which is good. Because I told you I'm American, so I have the, you know, I need deodorant. I don't want to go God smelling like me. If I go before God, oh, Pastor Terry's a sinner. Everybody's going to say it. Nobody's going to disagree with me. However, I don't need to say that. I am not Jacob anymore. I am who? I am Esau. Because that is what God has made me. I am not Terry Henderson. I am Jesus Christ. Why? Because that is whose righteousness God gave me. Everyone, don't look at yourself. Look at the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Which one is it? Let's talk about it. Let's say I have a boxing match, okay, against Floyd Mayweather or Mike Tyson. Who do you think is going to win? Mike Tyson with just one arm would kick my butt. Right? See, I don't understand why boxers go 25 rounds. If I fought Mike Tyson, first you get, I mean, your money's already guaranteed. You get the money before you fight. You understand? So if they gave me $1 million to fight, okay. As soon as I step out, I'm going to like, uh, as soon as he, at, even like the punch is not even by my face. It's going to be like right here. I'm going to be like, <laughs> my mouthpiece is going to fall out. I'm going to drool everything. And then I go home and collect my million dollars, right? I don't even know why you fight. So the important thing is, if I fight my Tyson, my Tyson's going to beat me, right? Because why? He's stronger than me. He'll destroy me. If sin fights against the blood of Jesus Christ, which one will win? Which one's supposed to win? So if the blood of Jesus is poured on me like the word of God says, then why is there sin remaining? You understand what I'm saying? People who say, no, I'm still a sinner, is because in their heart... Sin is greater than the blood of Jesus. If the blood of Jesus is truly greater than my sin, then I can say boldly, I can say confidently that I am righteous, that my sin has been washed by the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen? Everyone, are you Jacob or are you Esau? Are you yourself or are you the righteousness of Jesus Christ? That is the faith that we need to have, and that is what we need to confess with our mouths. Amen? Amen. Everyone, I hope that you will receive this faith into your heart. So let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Father God, we truly thank you for this time. God, we ask that you continually lead our heart to the word of God, to believe not what we see, but to believe in the great promise of God. Lord, all this time we thought that Jacob lied, but we could see that in front of the word of God, in front of the work that Rebecca did. He did not insist upon him being Jacob. He did not insist upon his own righteousness, but he forsook his righteousness and was able to receive the image that Rebecca made of him, and he was able to speak in faith. Lord, you have made us righteous through Jesus Christ. Lord, let us lay down what we think is right. Let us lay down our conscience. Let us throw away our thoughts and our experience, and Lord, let us also with our same mouths, say boldly that we are righteous through Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would give each and every one of these students that faith inside of their heart. God, we truly thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray.